bit of a shell shock is what it is. So in the last few months, we've seen many security vulnerabilities that had a wide, um, a huge implication on either organization or security response team. Shell shock in particular was interesting because, well, not interesting, but it was, was bad because it was a vulnerability that affected a wide uh, range array of users. Um, and um, the first 24 hours when, when it was announced, people were struggling on um, understanding what it is, what impact it had on organization, and what do we need to do to fix it. So um, I think from that angle, uh, shell shock was, was very interesting. Yeah. And I can also add on that after the initial uh, disclosure of the vulnerability, they, there were a series of uh, following new disclosures uh, related to that vulnerability and it had a huge potential of affecting larger number of users. So that's why it draws so many uh, kind of attention uh, to that specific vulnerability. So the typical approach or typical question on a vulnerability was, do we have any fixes for it? Do we have any patches for it? And uh, easily security teams will say, okay, there's a patch, go to this link, please implement it, and that'll be your resolution. Um, in a lot of cases, it was not always very practical or feasible for network operators because they have to deal with live production system. And unless that vulnerability is really affecting a network appliance or causing a network-based uh, attacks, it was not really feasible for network operators to focus on that vulnerability. They will just focus on the availability of the network itself. But um, in this specific example, I can say um, after this disclosure, especially our research team, Dell Skewards CTU, was able to map all those intelligence together. So from the vulnerability, we have found who is exploiting, uh, what is the exploit code, and what kind of malware is actually being dropped by that exploit code. And from that malware, uh, we could generate some network indicators, like uh, IP addresses or domain names or URLs being used uh, to coordinate that attack. So those kind of in indicators, what we call actionable intelligence, is the type of information that uh, the security teams are willing to share with the network operators on top of, I mean, additionally, not only saying, okay, you need to, you need to patch this. Well, I think uh, what Arnold just discussed is what a lot of the security teams uh, are doing, uh, including the ones in our region, so sharing information and providing context on what the vulnerability is and how bad it is uh, and where should we look at to fix to fix things um, is very important in the you know when we have something like this happening so a lot of that is 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 happening uh, but what arnold also pointed out was sometimes we need specific information so instead of just saying that you know this is bad this is going to lead to the end of the world you know we need we need more information so that people can actually do something about it uh, with regard to network uh, operators, while you know stuff that, that is happening uh, when it comes to things like shell shock, people will say that oh this is application level stuff. You know we, we don't have to worry about it. But um, shell shock um, affected Bash, and this is mm -hmm. this is available in many systems, including the systems that uh, network operators have internally, right? So they are also uh, affected indirectly mm -hmm. uh, or directly by this, um, and I think. When people read about something from the media and they want to know, you know, it is, is this affecting us? This is where best practices in managing your assets comes into play as well. Sure. Right. So we need to know in our organization, we have, you know, all these servers and these computers and they are vulnerable to this particular attack because without that, that information um, in your hands, it's hard to do anything about it because you'll be struggling uh, to follow, to you know, to ask around or to ping around into your network to see whether or not you are vulnerable to such, such an attack. Uh, and, you know, without doing, you know, your homework beforehand, mm -hmm. uh, it's very difficult to deal with any shell shock-like threats uh, moving forward. Sure. Uh, not only shell shock, um, I mean, a lot of vulnerabilities which are considered as host-based or targeting end-user uh, type of vulnerability or exploit codes. Uh, as Adley said, it is easy to ignore 
that kind of vulnerability vulnerability in terms of network operators' perspective because they believe it's not really affecting the network availability. But we also need to point out the administrators who are managing the network is also an end user in their system and their accounts are also a kind of initial vector that the adversaries are also targeting. So uh, I would recommend it's not really to be ignored, but also to be uh, well uh, focused or well, um, should I say focused uh, for uh, host-based vulnerabilities also.